uh, Sunday, November 10th here in New York, and more specifically here in Long Island. Got into town on Thursday the 7th, and yeah, I haven't played any poker recently. Last time I played was the session documented in Vlog 40, which I posted the day before Halloween. And the last time I played was in late, uh, middle to late October. So took a little bit of a hiatus, uh, hitting a little bit of a downswing as you all know. So figured it was good to get away from the game for a little bit, get away from vlogging, all that stuff. But here in the East Coast now, uh, here on the East Coast and here mainly for some family activities. So yeah, last video was posted the day before Halloween and a couple weeks have passed by. Let's get caught up on some of the happenings. For starters, spent Halloween in Alameda. It's an annual tradition for my family. I uh, bring my parents over along with uh, my sister-in-law's mom to do trick-or-treating with the kids. Really fantastic area in Alameda to do that. Uh, a lot of folks would drive over even from Oakland and other parts of the East Bay to partake in those festivities. Really great family-oriented area to do uh, trick-or-treating with the kids. So highly recommend it. Uh, super, super awesome to see the kids really happy and happy to uh, contribute to their tooth decay. Following the Halloween fun on Saturday, November 2nd, went and saw comedian Jimmy O. Yang, pretty well-known guy uh, for his part on Silicon Valley, as well as the movie Crazy Rich Asians. Uh, had a really good time doing that. Highly recommend checking his uh, comedic performances out. And following that fun evening on Sunday the 3rd, uh, went with some good friends to a spot called Platform 248 in San Francisco. Yeah, Platform 248 is a really great spot. First time there for me. Just a nice little spot to play some games, grab some beverages, both adult and non-adult. Uh, just a good time out, play some Mahjong, things of that nature. So recommend that as well. I'll put some info in the description box below in case any of you are interested in checking that place out. So yeah, despite a less than ideal month of October from a poker perspective, was at least able to end it on a really high note amongst friends and family, as well as start November off uh, with some positivity as well. And that essentially brings us to kind of the present day as I'm recording this. Got into New York on the 7th and just been here for a variety of family things. A uh, really fun time getting to see a lot of extended family. The main point of the trip is to celebrate my cousin's first daughter's birthday. Uh, there's a pretty common tradition in the Chinese culture called the Red Egg and Ginger Party where you celebrate the 100th day birthday for the kiddo. And we did just that over the weekend so far. Really fun, I uh, had some amazing crab earlier in the week with the family and just a really nice celebration. Get to see a lot of my uh, mom's side of the family. But yeah, super stoked for my cousin Amanda. Uh, she's married to an awesome guy named Pat who is a fantastic dude. But yeah, following the baby celebration last night, Amanda, Pat and one of their good friends, Rich and I went over to a bar called Station House. <laughs> So yeah, that pretty much covers all of the poker and life details since vlog 40. Uh, it's been pretty nice taking a break from poker, but I haven't stepped away from the game completely. I've been doing some light study as well as some work on the mental game and feeling pretty refreshed and re-energized to get back at it. And uh, the good thing is that I'm actually gonna have some time to do that on this trip. Uh, as mentioned, one of my cousin's good friends is Rich and he's gonna have some time tomorrow uh, to hang with me and we're gonna go play some poker uh, on Veterans Day. I'm not gonna share the location just yet, but it'll be a first time for me personally and for the vlog. So that's gonna be really exciting. But as for now, it is getting a little bit cold. It's starting to creep in the sub 40s, which is pretty damn cold for uh, this California boy here. So hop back in there with the family and I'll come back to you all shortly with some poker.
might be the earliest I've ever woken up for poker. It's uh, 7 in the morning, but uh, I'm still on West Coast time, so it's technically 4 in the morning. So the plan is to hop in a lift, take the train, and then hop on a bus. This is Rich. You too, this is Rich. It's Monday the 11th. Shout out to all the veterans out there. Just finished a session here at the Borgata in Atlantic City. First time here playing some East Coast poker, East Coast Sin City, I guess you can call it. And before we dive into the hand recaps, just want to touch on a few things about the game. Uh, the main notables are that it is a 10-handed game. Uh, is isn't ideal in terms of action, but one thing that I think helps to induce additional action is that you actually pay a rake every half hour. It's $5 every half hour instead of taking the rake out of every single pot. So I kind of like that in the sense of trying to induce some additional action. And the last thing is that it is a $200 to $1,000 buy-in for the 2-5 game. All right, so I sit down in the game for $600 with the intention to add on if needed, but just want to fill out the table to kind of start. And in this first hand, it actually takes place within the first 15 minutes of me sitting down. There's a straddle pot, the cutoff, and the button limp. I'm in the big blind with 5-6 of diamonds, and the straddler's to my left, and he decides to put in a raise to $65. Both players make the call and I decide to make the call as well. So we go four ways to a flop of king four three rainbow with one diamond. So pretty good flop. I flopped the open-ended straight draw with a backdoor diamond draw. I check it, the straddler puts out a bet of $120. It gets over to the cutoff and he puts in a raise to $300. Button folds, it gets back to me and I've got $520 back. Pretty much a decision between going all in or folding. Uh, given that I've got eight clean outs uh, with some backdoor diamonds available, I wanna continue the hand. Uh, but for some unknown reason, I decided to just call, uh, despite wanting and knowing that I'm going to see both cards uh, eventually getting all of the money in on the turn. But I do make the call, and Straddler does give me the opportunity right away, and he jams all in for about 620. Uh, the other player calls, and I, of course, stick the money in, and the board runs out an eight on the turn, and so I'm going to need some help on the river. And then it comes in the form of a deuce of heart. So get the triple up here, making the nuts on the river. I quickly turn my hand over and the straddler actually turns his hand over as well. Uh, and he has three, four off suit. So he flopped two pair uh, after getting a bit frisky pre-flop and the other player mucks it. <laughs> I was really hoping you bought that ice king. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah, scoop a nice pot to start the session. Got a bit lucky after playing loose passive there. And quick shout out to Zach. He's the one that lost the hand with 3-4 offsuit. Uh, super, super nice guy. Took the beat like a champ. And he actually subscribed to the channel right after that hand. So shout out to you, Zach. Thank you for that. And thanks to the table mates as well. They're pretty strict about filming here at the Borgata. And all of the table mates were pretty cool about me whipping out the camera there to just get a little bit of footage of that hand. All right, this next hand is a five-way limped pot. I'm in the big blind and I check my option with one of my favorite hands for unknown reasons, the solo act, jacking off, and we go five ways to a flop of queen 10, seven rainbow. Checks to me, I bet $15 and I get two callers. The turn comes in offsuit three. I check it and the hijack puts out a bet of $50. The button goes all in for $80. And I decide to make the call here, uh, trying to test some run good in the beginning stages of this session. And also knowing that hijack can't re-raise. So, uh, I call and hijack makes the call as well and the river comes a whopping eight so completely miss here and unfortunately the solo act does not get any help from the five community members to get there so I check it 
The other player checks it back, and we go to showdown, and the button table is queen seven for two pairs. So he takes this one down. In this next hand, I've got a six of hearts from middle position. I raise it to $20, and I get a call from only the button. So we go heads up to a flop of eight, seven, five with two diamonds. Flop the up and down straight draw here. I check it, and he bets $40. He's only got another $105 back, so pretty shallow. So given the equity here, I decide to just jam and go with it. And he makes a pretty quick call. Uh, the turn comes a three of clubs and the river comes a jack of diamonds. So completely brick out. Uh, he tables pocket sixes. Uh, so he takes it down. Unfortunately for me, I uh, had fewer clean full outs than I thought, but given the relatively shallow stack there, I think it was pretty straightforward, but uh, do lose this one here. In this next hand, I raise it to $20 from early position with 910 suited and I get four callers. We go five ways to a flop of 975 rainbow. Checks to me, I see bet $50 with top pair here and backdoor spades, and only the big blind makes the call. Turn comes a four of spades. I pick up the backdoor flush draw, and he checks it. I decided to check it back, uh, mainly for two reasons, one being pot control and some deception here, but definitely don't mind a bet given uh, how strong this hand plays on this particular board. But I do check it, and we go to a river of another seven. So it pairs a seven on the board. He checks it, and at this point, I'm not sure what I can get thin value from. And I don't want to get uh, value owned against the better nine. So against my better judgment of uh, always liking to go for thin value bets, I decided to check it this time. And we table our hands and he shows the snowman. So that's a good sight to see. Uh, the nine edges him out here, a pair of nines edges him out here. So take this uh, hand down as well. All right, this is the last notable hand to share. There are two limps and I'm in the cutoff with ace eight of diamonds. It's usually a hand that I'm going to raise with uh, when it gets to me in this position in an unraised pot. But the under the gun player seemed like he could be one of those players that does the limp re-raise. So I didn't want to uh, raise and then get uh, bet off my hand and not get to see a flop with this pretty good looking hand. So I limp along, really different line than I'm not used to taking. But I limp along and Button puts in a raise himself. He raises it to $40. The under the gun calls and I make the call as well. We go three ways to a flop of six, five deuce with two diamonds. So really good flop for my hand. Uh, Undergun checks it, I check it, and Button checks back. The turn is a four of clubs, putting a one-liner to the straight out there. Checks over to the Button again, and this time he puts out a bet of $85. Under the gun folds quickly. So it's a bit of an interesting spot and bet here from the Button. I would expect loose aggressive players to bet here uh, because they'd be connecting with this board a decent amount of the time. But my perception of the player on the Button is that he's a bit on the tighter end of the spectrum. So just not sure that he has a three here that often. Uh, and it's unlikely that he has a hand like seven, eight, given that I've got an eight in my hand. And given that this board should favor my range a bit, I decide to put in a raise. I raise it to $215, uh, pretty much only repping a three here and some sets, but I think I can make it pretty tough for him to continue with one pair hands like pocket tens or pocket jacks. Hands like that that uh, are beating me now, but don't have any redraws and are gonna make it pretty difficult to call another bet on the river. But yeah, if he does get sticky, my plan is to bet the river regardless. Obviously the hope is to bet for value if uh, diamonds come through but certainly prepared to put in a bluff if need be and continue repping that three. And he he's in the tank for quite a while. He's deliberating for a bit. He's glancing at me up and down and I'm doing my best to hold my Patrick Antonia statue pose. And after thinking about it for quite a while, a few minutes, he decides to let it go. So happy with that result. Uh, take some rather unique and different lines in this hand, starting at the preflop stage of the hand and then uh, check raising the turn uh, with some outs available. Uh, but yeah, just nice to kind of open up a different avenue to try to take that hand down out of position and uh, happy that it worked out this time. So those were the main notable hands to wrap up a four hour session or so. And the good news is that book to win, uh, get out of this downswing here. And the other bit of good news is that we've completed the four figure challenge with today's win. So uh, I was in the game for $600 and let's see how much I have exactly to see who the winners are. All right. So in the game for $600, here's 500, another 500 here. So that's 1,000, 1,500, 1,700, 1,800, 1,830, 1,836. So that's going to be the total in the game for 600, out for 1,836, profit of $1,236. All right, that's going to wrap things up for this session. Really happy to get a chance to share this East Coast poker experience with y'all. First time playing here at the Borgata in Atlantic City. Happy to have booked a win and even happier to have completed the four-figure challenge. Wasn't able to do it on the West Coast at home. Had to travel all across the country 
to complete the challenge on the East Coast and really happy to do it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to, when I get back home in San Francisco, I will check all of the responses and then identify who the three winners are and then post that as part of the ending of this video. So I'll see you all back from the Bay Area. All right, just a quick recap on the four figure challenge uh, introduced in vlog 37. Uh, there are supposed to be three winners. The first prize is a backpack plus some spades sunshades and the two runner up prizes are spades sunshades with Dave and Buster's gift cards. I was able to double check all of the guesses and there is a clear winner and a clear first runner up. But for the second runner up, there are actually three people that have a tie there. Uh, in vlog 37, I did mention that anyone who submits a duplicate guess, uh, it would be the first person that submitted that guess to uh, for that guest account. But given that there is a three way tie for third, technically, I'm just going to not be a stickler about it. And instead of having three winners, we're going to have five winners. All right. So the total that I won was one thousand two hundred and thirty six dollars coming in at a three way tie. Uh, the first one is Rock on Yufa O2 with a guess of one thousand two hundred and twenty two dollars. So fourteen dollars away. And second here is Stephen D also submitting the same guess of twelve twenty two. And Fat Penguin comes in with a guess of $12.50, which is also $14 away. And the first runner up goes to Austin Bonnie. Uh, $1,225 is his guess, uh, $11 away. And so the four of you will receive a pair of Spade Sunshades along with Dave and Buster's gift cards. And the top winner coming in at $6 away from the guess, he put in a guess of $1,230 is. Eric Dillon. So congratulations to all of you. Thank you to everyone for participating in the four figure challenge. As far as next steps for the winners, I'm a little bit old school when it comes to social media. So the best way to uh, collect the prize is if you hop on to my channel via a computer, click on the about tab and there should be an area where you can uh, find my email address. Click that, go through the, the quick steps there, shoot me a quick message, and then from there, I'll connect with you directly and we can either meet in person if you're local or I'll uh, mail the prizes to you. And that's gonna wrap it up for this one. A uh, big shout out to my new buddy, Rich, for taking the time to uh, hang with me in Atlantic City. So yeah, hope everyone else is doing great out there and I will catch you all on the next one.